Coach, thanks so much for joining us on the call. If you take a minute to tie up the game against Tulsa and what you expect to see Friday as you head to Orlando to face uh, the Knights of UCF. Well, it was a great win for us over Tulsa. And, uh, you know, the games everybody's been waiting for now is our, well, we had to travel to uh, Orlando to face Central Florida. The thing about it, Central Florida is very, a very explosive offense, lead the nation in scoring. Quarterback Milton does a great job of directing the offense, placing the ball in the right, Smith, right hands. When you have a threat like Smith on the outside, and then you can have killings where you can get the ball to. And defensively, you know, the Griffin was the player of the year last year, and there's a handful. Very aggressive on defense, and, uh, you know, it's going to be a great matchup for us. <clears throat> we'll take questions for Coach Charlie Strong, please. Star 1 on your telephone keypad will put you in the queue, then the operator will introduce you. We'll go next to Joey Knight with the Tampa Bay Times. Coach, can you uh, tell us the status of Kevon Dingle? Is he still with your program? Well, right now he's uh, suspended, Joyce, and, uh, you know, until we get all the details and, and see exactly what happens. <clears throat> we haven't spoken to you um, since Thursday night. How how disappointed are you in this development? No, I haven't spoken with him at all. <clears throat> no. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you, will Dietrich Nichols be available, healthy enough to play uh, against UCF? He got dinged up Thursday. Yeah, he's fine. <clears throat> We'll go next to Chris Vanini with The Athletic. Coach, what do you see out of uh, Mackenzie Milton for UCF, and and what are your keys to stopping him? Well, I tell you what, he's having an unbelievable year, and uh, his numbers are just astounding. And you, you look at him, he does a great job of directing the offense. He places the ball in the right place. And, and the thing about him is he just – he just um, – when you try to rush him, he gets the ball out, and then if you don't rush, you better get ready because he can find the open receivers. But it, you know, it's our hands are going to be full. Cool. We get we know this that the title player he is, and the year that he's having, and uh, we, we're going to have to play our best. <clears throat> and with the number of players who touch the ball for them, either running it or, or catching it, how how uh, how difficult is that the game plan for? Well, it's really tough because they do a great job of just spreading the ball around. You know, you get their skillings, you can get the ball to their Smith, there's Anderson who comes in. There's, there's so many weapons and so many targets. They do, you know, one team that can find a tight end. So they uh, they they have a, a lot of players that they play, and they do a great job with the quarterback. And it's all him where he does a great job of putting the ball in the right player's hands. And it's all about just finding the playmakers. Thank you, Coach. We'll go next to Mark Narducci with the Philadelphia Inquirer. Hey, Coach. Um, Tulsa played you very tough last week. Can you tell me what, what kind of impressed you most about them? Well, the thing that happened, you know, we we, we were playing well, and then uh, uh, we let a, a few throws get away from us. And offensively, we had a big half the first half. And then second half, we didn't uh, – we, uh, they end up stopping us, and well, we just didn't convert on third down. Never created any rhythm, and it just—it was more of us than them. Where we had to be consistent, and we had to continue with our tempo. And one other thing, um, one other thing, with, with, with all the hype for this game, and, and and now that it's here, you know, you've always said we can't, we can't look ahead, we can't look ahead. Now that it's here, just how big is it, and what, what's the atmosphere around that? Well, it's the point of championship, and it's a chance to go play for the championship. So now you get to win this side, and, and now you, you know, you win this game. Now you move on to go play Memphis. So it, it's big, and it's a, it's a big game for both schools. And uh, you know, it's a it's a rival game. When you're talking about that, you look at two schools that are an hour and a half apart. So it's it, it, it's a big it's a big time game. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go next to Trace Trucker with Nightline. Yes, Coach. Uh, you have a history with UCF dating back to your days at Louisville. Would you talk a little bit now that you're a part of this rivalry about the UCF athletic program, in particular football, what your impressions are of the program? Well, you look at two programs that are uh, both of them are in the state, and like I said, they're, they're so 
Uh, you're looking at right down Interstate 4, you, both both schools set, and uh, two of the two largest schools that within the state. So in the, we're in the same conference. So it's it's great. We play each other every year. And the, the rival has been, has been uh, it gets bigger and bigger because the, the better your the teams are, the, the bigger the rival is and the better the game is. So, you know, with the two teams, with us having to, them being undefeated, us having a one loss, it makes this, this what makes the game so much bigger this this year. What do you think the importance of of this rivalry is to the growth of the American at the P6 conference? Well, it's big because, you know, you need uh, – you're going to get the exposure on ABC, which gives us a 330 game. So the exposure is going to be there, and everyone's going to have a chance to watch, uh, you know, two uh, two of the top teams in this conference on this side of the conference go battle it out with the opportunity to go play uh, Memphis uh, next week. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go next to Dan Tutorial with WakeUpCallDT.com. Good afternoon, Coach. How are you? Dan, good. How are you doing? Doing well. Um, kind of going off of that, just what you can say about the state of, you know, UCF and USF together to see how far both of these programs have come and for you to be a part of South Florida side of it, just what you can say about the growth of football in Florida that isn't named Florida State and Miami and, and so on and so forth. Well, you look at it, and the, the thing that happens when you look at Florida State, Miami, and Florida, you know, they, you don't ever get in a recruiting battle with them because they're going to get who they're going to get. So the, now you got to battle uh, Central Florida, and it's always been like this where we're battling each other for the, for the next best players. And so you, those guys all have uh, a lot of know one another. They've all, some of them played together in high school. They've developed their relationship with one another. So, the, you know, it's a big game because now you, you're looking at teammates, you're looking at friends. You know, everything that make up a rival is, is what you see now with the, with the two of us playing. And how much does this play into recruiting a game like this where it's for the east side of the American and it's for the right to play in the American football championship? How much do you feel this could potentially play into recruiting no matter who wins on each side of it as far as, uh, as, far as benefits moving forward? Well, there's still you know, some recruits that really haven't made up their minds, so a lot of them will be at this game, and some they're gonna have a chance to watch two teams play. So, you know, you you always want to make sure that that when the recruits see it, you know, they when they make that decision that you want them to come to South Florida just because of the way we played and and what we've done. <clears throat> Thanks, Coach. I appreciate your time. Uh huh. Thank you. We'll go next to Leo Haggerty with It's Sports Magazine. Good afternoon, Coach. Good. How you doing, Will? <clears throat> going well, Coach. Thanks for asking. Coach, when I was coaching in college, I told people my wife did an excellent job of raising our kids while I raised other people's kids. Is it still that way today where you need that special someone to handle your family from July to January while you're handling your football family? Oh, you really have to have because so much of your time is, is taken away from your family. So you're going to have to have someone that is strong within your family who who can raise your kids. And your kids got have to understand that, you know, that you're away doing your job and that it's not so much that you're taking anything away from them. But, you know, they're, it, because of your job, it has placed you in that position where you have to go help raise someone else's children. So when you recruit young men, you know, they become a part of you. And you want to make sure that that, that they are, that you can teach them the right things and they do the right things. And it's all about the values and the decision making that they make. But it is it takes a special person where you know they can raise your family, and then you have to go raise someone else's. Coach, with UCF and USF having such explosive offenses, is holding Central Florida to a field goal almost like a stop this Friday? Well, it's, it's, they are so explosive on offense. You know, you look at them, I think they're right at 48 points a game, almost close to 50, and they can they can score at will, and they get the ball up down the field because of the quarterback and, and what he can do with the football and where he can place the ball. So that's, that's going to be a big challenge for us. You know, our challenge is can we just get, get, stop them? Can you get off the field on third down? And what's going to be critical. And you, you also have to win on first down. You went on first down to get it to third down. But it's going to be critical, and it's just challenges there for our defense. 
Thank you, Coach. Happy Thanksgiving and good luck Friday. All righty. Same to you. We'll go next to Derek Sharp with Bulls Unlimited. Hey, Coach, just one question. You said you're going to have to play your best to win. Uh, how close have you come to your best this year, or have you seen it? We really haven't seen it yet. Uh, we have not put together a complete game yet. You know, you want is maybe one half on offense, and then the next half the defense steps up, and then the kicking game. But in all three phases, we have yet to see a complete game, and we need a complete game this game. That's what it's going to take a total team effort. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. We'll go next to Evan Easterling with the Temple News. Hi, uh, just one question for me. Um, going back to the Tulsa game, D'Angelo Brewer uh, put up 160 yards on you guys. Um, now he's the all-time leading rusher in Tulsa history. Just what did you see from him um, in that game? Well, he's an outstanding back, runs very hard. He's, uh, you know, he has great vision, able to lower his pads, get the ball to the house. He's got enough speed to get it outside, and he's a really strong runner inside. Great, thank you. Thank you. Coach, thanks so much for your time today and also all season long. Uh, all right. Good luck to you this weekend. Uh, all right, thank you. you in the polls. 